Welcome to the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast, powered by Jetro. Each week, we bring extremely valuable accounting and tax tips specific to small business owners. You will be on your way to growing your business and putting more money in your pockets. Here's your host. Hello, small business owners, and welcome back to another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about and continue the discussion about coronavirus and COVID-19, and we're going to talk specifically about the relief options available to both business owners and individuals. And we're going to do kind of a summary of it, as we've talked about a lot of these items in the past, but I want to bring it all together in one episode. Now, before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by Jetro, a digital accounting firm servicing business owners across the country, helping them relieve stress around financials and save thousands in taxes. I am your host and founder of Jetro, Mike Jezoshek. And like I mentioned at the beginning, today's episode, we're going to talk about relief options that are available and kind of discuss and go over a summarized view of all of them. Now, we've been talking about these episodes for the past couple of weeks or talk about these items for the past couple of weeks, but it's important to note that this is a very fluid situation. So there's constantly changes and updates and things going on. And so I just want to give you an update of where we are today. And know that these are what's the information that we have available to us right now, but this information could definitely change as we go on. So this is what we know as of now. And I'm also going to link in uh, the show notes, a link to Gusto. Gusto has put together a great article that kind of outlines all these options. So if you want to dig into more of what we're talking about, get into the details a little bit further check out that Gusto link. We're going to include that in the show notes. And I really appreciate them putting that together as there's so much information out there right now. It's constantly changing. It really helps to have people working together to kind of wrap this around the heads of both uh, business owners and individuals alike. So the first thing I want to talk about is what we've been talking about a lot. And this is about the loan options, specifically the EIDL and the PPP loan. So I just want to go through a summary of both of those loans again. The EIDL is a loan that you apply for directly with the SBA. And this can be used for operating expenses, payroll, accounts payable, et cetera, for your business. Uh, And this operates much like your traditional loan. Uh, where you just get some funding, depending on the amount that's approved, and then you have to pay that back up to 30 years at 3.75% APR. Now, the big thing about the EIDL is this grant that everyone's talking about. And when they originally announced it, they mentioned that it would be a $10,000 grant that that you're available to get as more of an initial advance, whether or not you're approved for lending. And so that $10,000 grant does not need to be repaid. Now, here's the big thing. Recently, we found out that that $10,000 number has changed a little bit, and that EIDL grant amount is $1,000 per employee that you have. So it's up to $10,000 max, but it could be less than that depending on how many employees you have. So keep that into consideration when you're looking at the options that are available to you. Know that that $10,000 number that was thrown around originally has now changed a little bit. It's still a maximum of $10,000, but it could be less depending on the amount of employees that you have. And so that's the EIDL loan. The PPP or the Paycheck Protection Program, this is the one that we've been talking about a lot too. And this is money that has the potential to be 100% forgiven. And again, this is based on two and a half times your business's average monthly payroll. And if you're a small business owner with no employees and you're a sole proprietor or single member LLC, this would be based on your net self-employment earnings. And these loans you apply for directly with the bank. This is not a loan that you apply for on the SBA website. You can go to your local bank. We're recommending you check with your local bank first. If that doesn't work, check out other options. Uh, But this is mainly for payroll. And so the uses of this can be for payroll, mortgage interest, rent and utilities, and interest on some debt. Um, Now, this any amount that's not forgiven will be treated like a traditional loan. Two years, 1% interest. And so the amount that's forgiven would be items that was spent on payroll or mortgage interest, rent, utilities, et cetera, for the eight weeks after funding. So let's let's imagine that you got funding for the PPP loan today. You would have eight weeks to spend that on payroll, rent, utilities, et cetera, and that amount would be forgiven. Now, there's a couple big indicators that you need to be considered of. Uh, first off, 
75% of that forgivable amount must be used on payroll. So if your PPP loan is $10,000, at least $7,500 must be used on payroll for that forgivable piece. Um, and it's also important to note that you have to maintain employee numbers. So if your employee numbers cut, you're laying people off or, um, or laying people off, that number could be reduced. And you also have to maintain employee pay. So if you reduce someone an employee's pay by more than 25%, that forgivable piece could as well again be reduced. So some things to consider with the PPP program, it's money that can be forgiven. You have eight weeks after funding to use it for forgivable purposes, uh, but you must also maintain your employee count and um, the amount of pay. So that's the EIDL loan and the PPP loan. Um, those are all loans that business owners can take advantage of and should be taken advantage of. As far as funding, um, we're finding that the banks are quite overloaded. So these aren't happening as quick as they were initially promised to. But I would recommend getting your application in as soon as possible on these two loans. Uh, getting it in as soon as possible to make sure that the funding is available for you and you can get uh, you can you can get the, the funds for this and potentially give it forgiven if we look at the PPP side. Now, some of the other things that we want to talk about, and we're going to kind of be going through um, much of the items that, that, that Gusto talks about on their website, uh, but the first one is a loan subsidy. So if you have an SBA loan, and this would be a loan, an SBA loan that you had before the coronavirus, so prior to this disaster, um, the SBA is offering a subsidy where they will make payments directly to the lenders. And 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 the borrowers and the bow and they're going to forgive you as the borrower for these payments for up to six months. So this is a subsidy if you have a current SBA loan for a different disaster. So uh, something before coronavirus, the SBA is offering a subsidy where they're going to make payments directly to the lender for up to six months, and they're for going to forgive you of those payments that they make. So if you have an SBA loan, this is definitely something you should be taking um, taking advantage of. And again, you can read more about it on the Augusta website. The next item I want to talk about is the employee uh, retention credit. And this is basically um, where eligible employers can receive a retention credit for up to 50% of the first 10,000 of qualified wages in all calendar quarters for each employee paid between March 12th or January 1st. So the big thing here is to be eligible for this, you must have either one, been subject to closure of your business because of COVID-19. So this would be for non-essential businesses, or you have had a decline in gross receipts of more than 50% when compared to that same quarter in the prior year. So let's imagine last year you had $10,000 in sales in Q2. This year you have $4,000. You would qualify for this. Now, again, this is um, a credit up to 50% of the first $10,000 of qualified wages for each employee during a period where this took place. And so the big thing with the employee retention credits is that this cannot be combined with the PPP. So you really have to make a determination on which one you want to choose or which one's going to be a better benefit for you. So if this is something that you qualify for, check into this. Um, do the calculation. Find out which option is going to give you the better results. Typically, for many of our clients that are expecting to be able to open up before Q3, the PPP is giving them a better benefit, but that's not going to be a standard case for everybody. So be sure to check out the, the employee retention credit if you qualify and see if that's going to be a better benefit or the PPP program is going to be the better benefit. The next thing I want to talk about is net operating losses and charitable contributions. Um, these are changes that they made specifically due to the coronavirus. Check out our episode last week. We dove into these two cases specifically, and again, that's net operating losses, the carry back feature, as well as charitable contributions and, and what options are available for there. Uh, the next option I want, the next thing I want to talk about, and this is more towards individuals. This is going to be regarding the rebate checks, and these checks are supposed to start hitting this week. And how these checks work is, it's for singles, for people that are single, it's twelve hundred dollars, and for those that are married, it's going to be twenty four hundred dollars, and then it's going to be an additional five hundred dollars for each child under seventeen. So again, these are these these rebate checks, these checks in the mail that everyone's talking about, they're supposed to start hitting this week. And the IRS is going to have a link on their website where you can check the status of yours. But again, the amounts of these checks 
is going to be $1,200 for singles and $2,400 for those that are married, as well as an additional $500 for each child under the age of 17. Now, it's important to note that these will start to phase out. If you are single and your income is over $75,000, they're going to start to phase out for you. If you're married and your income is over $150,000, they're going to start to phase out for you. So uh, look at your prior year tax returns, see where you're at in income, and you'll have an idea of what you can be expecting, if anything, for these tax uh, rebates. Um, again, the IRS is supposed to be updating their website, hopefully today, um, but check on irs.gov. There'll be a link where you can um, look specifically for these rebate checks to see the status of yours, when you should be receiving it, if you're going to be getting one or not. Again, $1,200 for singles and $2,400 for those that are married. Um, the next uh, piece I want to talk about is retirement account disbursements. So those individuals that have been impacted by the coronavirus are allowed to take up to $100,000 out of their reti retirement accounts without penalty during this emergency. And so this will count for distributions made on or after January 1st, um, 2020 until December 31st, 2020. So again, you're able to take money out of your retirement account if you're affected by coronavirus up to $100,000 uh, without penalty during this emergency. So if you need some funds, if you're in a tough spot right now, that might be something you want to consider. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about student loan relief. Um, the, the government has, has provided some measures and relief measures to ease the financial burden of students. And so what they're allowing is the deferral of student loan payments. So they're suspending all payments due for loans through September 30th, 2020 without interest. They're also allowing loan cancellations. So if you had um, courses that you use student loans for and because and those courses ended up being canceled because of COVID-19, the associated federal loans will be canceled for that period. And another big thing, this is going to be related to those business owners out there, is that there's they, they allowed an item for employer assistance where employers are allowed to contribute up to $5,250 tax-free to assist their employees with student loan payments. So if you're an employer out there where you have students with student loan payments, you're able to contribute and pay off some of their student loans up to $5,250 for the year to assist your employees with student loan payments. So I hope this was helpful. Again, I wanted to do a summary based on the information we have now is this things are constantly changing. So we talked about the PPP, the EIDL. Remember that EIDL grant? Uh, went from a for sure $10,000 to up to $10,000. And it sounds like it's about $1,000 per employee. The PPP loan stayed relatively the same. You want to try to apply for that as soon as possible if that's something that's going to be available to you. Um, we also talked about the SBA loan subsidy. So if you had previously had an SBA loan uh, out prior to this disaster, um, check into that. Um, the employee retention credit is also um, the ability to receive a retention credit for 50% of the first $10,000 of qualified wages. You, this cannot be combined with the PPP. So you want to do a calculation to see if the employee retention credit is going to be better than the PPP or vice versa. Again, mo a lot of the calculations that we're doing, we're finding the PPP is the better route, but definitely take some time to do this calculation. Um, last week, we talked about net operating losses and charitable contributions. Check into that episode if you want more information on this. The recovery rebates, those checks in the mail, are supposed to start hitting this week. Uh, I have heard of some clients already receiving some, so uh, be on the lookout for those. Remember that there is a high income. If you're in a higher income bracket, there is a phase out of these payments. So just take that into consideration. Um, we also talked about retirement disbursements where you can um, take money out of your retirement account with no penalty. Um, so if that's something you need because you're affected by this, you need some funds, think about that. And then the student loan relief. The big piece about the student loan relief, especially for small business owners, is the ability for employers to contribute up to or pay off up to $5,250 tax-free to assist their employees with the student loan payments. So this might be something you want to consider could be a great benefit depending on what situation you're in. So I want to thank you for um, listening to another episode. I hope this was helpful. We're going to continue to touch on things as they become available. Check our Facebook group. We're constantly updating things in there. And let me know what questions you guys have. 
let me know some of the problems, some of the things that you're getting hit with, and uh, bring them in the Facebook group and email me. Do whatever we need to do so that we can start to tailor and move a lot of these episodes to answer your specific questions. I know there's a lot of questions out there. I know there's a lot of confusion. My goal is to just try to help make it as clear as possible. And again, I'm also going to link out to the Gusto um, resource for this that provide that provides outlines on a lot of the things that we discussed today. So if you have additional questions, want more information on some of the things we discussed, check out that link. I'm going to put it in the show notes um, relayed directly from Gusto, who has been a great partner of ours. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode, and I will see you next week. Now, one last thing before I go. Don't forget to check out our podcast website at www.taxsavingspodcast.com. That's taxsavingspodcast.com. This is a great resource to go and check out our most recent episodes, as well as find extra items if you want to take what we discuss here and dive deeper. Again, also join our Facebook group where we share tons of value and you have the opportunity to bring situations you are faced with to the table, and we'll help you out in that Facebook group, and other business owners will support you as well. You can join by simply searching in Facebook for the Small Business Tax Secrets Group. Again, it's a Facebook group called Small Business Tax Secrets, and there should be a group that pops up that you can join. This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast from the team at Jetro. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review on whatever platform you listen to us on and share with other business owners. If you have any questions or future topics you want to hear, email them to tax at jetrotax.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.